Hi guys, it's Leave with Pro Equine Grooms and Miguel talking about chestnuts and ergots today. At one point in time, people believed that chestnuts were actually eyes that horses used to be able to see at night. Therefore, they would call them night eyes. It was also believed, and it might still be believed, that chestnuts actually are scent glands. And the rumor has it that if you take a piece of a horse's chestnut into a field in an attempt to catch some of the horses in the field, the horses will notice that you are carrying a scent gland and will come over to you to investigate, to find out what this new strange creature is, therefore allowing you to catch your horse a little bit easier. Yep. I've never actually tried catching a loose horse in a field using a chestnut because I found that if you act like there's something in your hand, most horses think there's a treat and they'll come and investigate anyway. Horses and chestnuts are also kind of unique in that most horses have four chestnuts, one on each leg. However, some horses only have chestnuts on the front legs, the hind legs being optional. Same goes for ergots. Four ergots is fairly common, although some horses have two and some horses have none. As far as grooming your horse's chestnuts and ergots, it's really a personal preference type of situation. Some horses grow fairly um, protruding chestnuts and you might find that your farrier can trim them down for you or you can soften them with some petroleum jelly allowing you to peel the layers off. I find for ergots they're particularly annoying for me so I prefer to keep them peeled just using my thumbnail after my horse has been in the wash rack and gotten a little bit wet. Super easy to do that. If your horse has feathers on his lower legs and you want to leave the ergots as is, perfect. If you want to trim them for cosmetic reasons, great. They come in all different circum, um, circumferences. So either they're really, really you know, skinny and pointy or they can be really fat and shallow. Totally, totally depends on the horse. It is important if you decide to do something with your horse's ergots, which are behind and kind of below the fetlock joints, that you be sure to peel them or clip them, but don't twist them off. A lot of the soft tissue structures like tendons and ligaments in the horse's legs kind of come together behind the fetlock and you don't want to twist something and, um, and interfere with those structures beneath the surface. So where do the chestnuts and the ergots come from? It was widely believed for a long period of time that over millions and millions of years as the horse evolved, he had originally five toes that eventually blended together and became one toe like he has today. And the remaining four toes became what we call vestigial organs or vestigial appendages. And we sort of believe that and it's a little bit questionable now that the other two toes became the splint bones, which are on either side of the cannon bone, all four cannon bones, and one toe became the ergot and one toe became the chestnut. But if you look at the true definition of a vestigial organ, it is that it is some, func it is some functionless piece of your horse's anatomy, but we do know that these splint bones actually serve a function, not only to protect the cannon bone, but to protect some of the soft tissues and ligaments of the upper leg and provide a little bit of support for the hock and the knee joint. So in that respect, it's not truly, truly a vestigial toe that became a splint bone, but who knows, there's lots of operating theories out there. I read recently that a new operating theory for what happened to the horse's five original toes is that they actually still are in the hoof capsule, but you can only see them on a histological or microscopic level and that over evolution and development in the womb, those five toes become one. And therefore, that opens up the mystery of then where do the splint bones and where do the chestnuts and the ergots come from? And what do they do? There's also another theory about what happened to the horse's toes over time. And that is that some of the toes actually became the lower part of the horse's splint bone. There's some bony evidence to suggest that the bottom pieces of the horse's splint bone are in fact um, remnants of a toe. 